As we just mentioned, Nate Bauer, Blue White Illustrated basketball reporter, breaking news this morning on a national level. Nate, what's going on with Penn State basketball? You know, look, I got to be, I don't want to take all the breaking news credit, right? Uh, Dick Weiss, Hoops Weiss, had a tweet late on, to, I, I don't know. Look, this is so weird. It's, you're caught in a purgatory of two sides agreeing to something and it being on a path to to getting there and it being at the finish line. But until it's done, until the ink is dry, it's not done. And so as we sit here on Wednesday morning, Mike Rhodes isn't the head coach of Penn State basketball, but there's a great, I mean, really excellent chance that he will be by about 4.35 this afternoon. Your um, obnoxious sticking to the facts has ruined my breaking news segment. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, it's okay. That's the news. The news is, as you and I talked about this morning, agreed in principle, expected to, all of the things are lining up for this to happen, but it has not happened yet. uh, Correct? Penn, Penn State is set to name him head coach right and so semantics yes but important nonetheless uh right it they're ready for it penn Penn state is prepared to name him the head coach but it has to clear the hurdle of the compensation committee which is just a rubber stamp it'll be fine uh they'll they'll go through with it and that'll be it so uh you know uh, look i've done this long enough things can happen right Mm -hmm. things can change people can tell their side that it, it's happening and that it doesn't end up happening. But, uh, you know, as of right now, um, you know, Penn state is very much operating under, uh, the knowledge that Mike Rhodes is going to be its next men's basketball coach. This story over the last week or so has dominated blue, white, illustrated.com. Nate has been doing an awesome job. There were five different updates in the coaching search, uh, timeline. Uh, and he was very thorough in terms of the number of candidates, the top candidates, how you could see how they were separating themselves, and, and he kept everyone really up to date with how this happened. So without going into all those details, which you can get at bluewhiteillustrated.com still if you want to go back and review everything and see what Nate has been doing, uh, without getting into all those details, how did we get here where Mike Rhodes is the candidate that uh, came from the pack to be the guy to lead yeah. Penn State, expected to be the guy yeah. to lead Penn yeah. State? I think it's, I think the, the like first point one a through point one B C D E right. Is that Pat Kraft wanted a sitting head coach. He wanted an active head coach in men's college basketball. Uh, and so my understanding of the process is that there was a very wide net cast and right. Feelers were, there was no limit. There was no limit to the number of people that they would uh, attempt to speak to and or gauge interest from. And so that that is just very wide ranging, right? I mean, they, like, look, Penn State just had its head coach in Micah Shrewsbury, like, stolen, right? It was poached, <laughs> Uh, Notre Dame decided that they wanted Micah Shrewsbury. They made enough uh, of an impression there. Micah had enough issues and some frustrations with Penn State that that match happened, right? Yeah. Is Micah left. And so that, that became a spot for him that was, uh, you know, it fit him. But there's a backside of this of Pat Kraft, you know, having maybe a mindset of, all right, if, if that's going to happen to you now, you want to do it to somebody else. (laughs) Right. And so, uh, and so Mike Rhodes of, of the candidates that were out there and, and certainly there were some who did not express a mutual interest in this job. Mike Rhodes is a guy who has a ton of experience and is at a, he's a sitting head coach at a basketball school. VCU is a basketball school. Now you might say to yourself, okay, it's not, um, it's not high major in the Atlantic 10, right? It's not, it's not, um, 
certainly it's not the Big Ten, it's not the Big Twelve, it's not the SEC, but they they love basketball there. I mean, it's a it's a big deal. It's a big it's a big deal with that program. And so uh, to to be able to make the pitch, make the sell, and and get him to agree to to take on a Penn State basketball program that let's be honest, it just is it in a better place today than when Micah Shrewsbury took it over? Uh, sure. Somewhat. Somewhat. Uh, Terms and conditions apply as always, right? There yeah, it, a lot it, left. To, to yeah, there's a, there's a there's a precipice that they're standing on right now that does not feel comfortable if you're switching out your head coach and you have so many departures and so many guys that don't have long ties to the program. You don't have a lot of veterans here that have more eligibility left. There's a bunch of very desirable freshmen. You yep. have no head coach and yeah. the portal. But that's okay. That's okay. And that's, that's kind of the, um, it's just, it's interesting because I, I think that there's, there has been, I have seen really uh, a lot of ends of the spectrum type of reaction to this. And even when we were leading up to it, right. I mean, I'm, I'm having these conversations in our message board and with our community and it, it became fairly clear on Sunday night that Mike Rhodes was the guy. He was the guy that Penn state was landing on. There were a few other loose ends to, to kind of tie up. But right, once you can wrap your head around Mike Rhodes being the guy, now you have to form an opinion on it. And yeah. you know, uh, he's he's taking over a program that is gutted, right? Like it's it's just it's the aftermath of Armageddon, right? <laughs> like it's yeah. just it's just in in uh, a lot of. Uh, player absences, you know, you're going to lose the majority, if not the entirety of uh, Micah Shrewsbury's staff, which is fine. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. Mike Rhodes is going to have his own guys to bring with him. Um, so there's there's that end of things. But also, you know, on the optimistic and, and maybe the realistic side, it, it's not impossible to cobble together a roster very quickly through the transfer portal. And right. the, the bottom line here is Micah Shrewsbury just did it. Right. Like it, uh, two years ago, when this job first came open for Micah Shrewsbury, it was a rush to the exits. Right. Yeah. And and even guys that uh, certainly, um, you, you know, you had Miles Dredd stick around. You had Seth Lundy stick around. Um, obviously, John Hera. Those were those were integral pieces to what Penn State became in the, the first year. But Isaiah Brockington left. Jamari yep. Wheeler left. You, you had like some really big guys who chose to leave. This is a different situation, right? Uh, Micah Shrewsbury didn't have a first full recruiting class that he brought into the program. So it's just it's just trying to keep some perspective here for people who are, uh, you know, taking all of this in that there's really big challenges ahead yeah. for Mike Rhodes. But also uh, reason to believe that, uh, that, that a lot of those can be addressed and, you know, figured out to the best of their ability as he starts this part of the process. As we said earlier, this breaking news comes to you live uh, just after 10 a.m. We're here on YouTube, part of the BWI live show. So we got some uh, comments here for Nate. PSU5148 says, thanks for your coverage of this, Nate. Appreciated. He has been excellent in coverage. One question I'll get in before the rest of my questions comes from Don. And this is really the, the other half of what you're talking about with, with the yep. transfer portal and with recruiting classes. Don asks, any thought on what players may be looking to come with uh, roads from VCU. No, I don't. I like, I do, but let's get this across the finish line. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm right. not um, first things I, first sort of guy. Yeah. I just, I just think that it puts, um, I, I just think it puts people in a tough spot when they haven't been able to communicate what their intentions are to, to the people that are, um, you know, around them and in this process. So like, it, it, can I sit here and say definitively uh, that somebody has has decided, made up their mind that they're coming with with roads to Penn State? No, I can't. Uh, is there some level of like flirtation, right? That that they're interested in following him? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. And so, you, I mean, you it's just, an opportunity. You can look at the rock. Yeah, it's an opportunity. This is a step up, right? You're moving into a power conference. Yep. There, there's a lot of that element to this. Of look. Things are different at Penn State, right? Like you, there are 
uh, understanding that Penn State isn't necessarily a resource rich or in the past hasn't been a resource rich program, that yeah. there's still there's still stuff there, right? You get to play against Big Ten opponents. Uh, yeah. So so I think it, it is an enticing bigger stage, uh, bigger spotlight, guys. more sure. opportunities to be on TV you know, playing against quality competition. We only have a few minutes left here. Really, we have like 60 seconds left, and there's so many things I want to get to. We'll obviously have more as this develops. We'll have a full show at some point this week. We'll also be broadcasting any press conferences uh, here on our YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe to Blue White Illustrated so you don't miss any content, any more information, any breaking news that happens throughout the rest of this coaching search. But... I guess the next part is, and we'll end with this, what is the next step for this organization to get into, uh, I think, a healthier lockstep internally? Because one thing that I've noticed is there's been a lot of external talk in an organization that typically keeps everything in-house and buttoned up. Penn State is pretty um, corporate about keeping all of their information, their infighting in. But that had, that spilled over through this conversation with uh, this Penn State coaching hire and the NIL conversation. So what is next for this uh, this program to get into a better spot holistically? Yeah, I, I mean, sir, look, it's it is a bottom line proposition. Penn State's NIL for men's basketball has to be better, it has to be better for football, too. I just I feel like a broken record because I keep saying this and it's not um I, I mean, I think that certainly it's been received, right? People are hearing it. I, I don't know that there's much more I can say, though, right? In terms of uh, like exposing or pulling back the the shades on what this is, what this is is Penn State's NIL was not up to the task, was not in shape to create a confidence for Micah Shrewsbury and his staff that there was a sustainable path forward in that marketplace, right? And uh, again, you have to have it. You cannot compete without it. Micah Shrewsbury said it himself. There is a reality here that Mike wrote, like, <laughs> uh, and and again, I mean, it just, it goes back to James Franklin, right? It's the things, when whenever the conversation turns into, oh, well, this guy's just complaining. It's just a, right, a, a gripe. It's not the next guy is going to want the exact same things. And right. so Mike Rhodes, for him to succeed at Penn State, he can be the best coach in the world, he, truly. And I think that there are, is a lot of reason to believe that he is a success. Like he has a formula for success that is tried and true. It is out there. He's been successful in the places that he's been. But if he does not have resources, if he does not have a, a war chest of NIL funding, to operate with, he will be doomed to failure at Penn State. It's it is that simple, and yeah. so it's it is simply a matter of the commitment of the athletic department, Pat Kraft and his staff, uh, to push this. It is a matter of personnel hires that need to be made for men's basketball, and it's a matter of the collectives and businesses and the donor class. You name it, like it, it is. It takes a village, and this is absolutely another instance in which that is true.